Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Um, we decided to do something different. It's all about family, right? Family matters to God. He it matters so much that he, our amazing God wanted to reconcile us to him, um, to himself. And he sent his only son so you and I can have that relationship. And um, so tonight we thought, hey, it's a family night. Let's talk about family, right? Let's talk about family. Uh, another day we will talk about the other subject. Um, but uh, I just want to open up and give you a, a scripture. But I want you to hear for, it was really difficult to choose, you know, just a few families. But I believe that the people that you're going to hear tonight, you're going to hear different families. And you're going to, one of the things that my husband and I said, you guys have decided to follow Jesus with everything. Because when you decide to follow Jesus, it's like, if it says go right, you go right. If it says left, you go left. And it's easy to sing it and dance it. But when he tells you, it's a different story. But when we see you, you have decided to raise your children in the ways that they should go. You have decided to, to embrace your, you know, your, your, your motherhood, your parenthood. You have decided to embrace your babies. And I think we're living in times when it's so hard. You know, we can say, you know, a lot of times I can say that most of our kids, okay, I'm going to be very careful. I'm not going to say most of our kids, uh, but in the world, I believe that a lot of, a lot of children, even in the church, it's, uh, it's uh, the iPad that is it's really raising them. It's, the, uh, it's our social media that is really raising them. It's, it's shocking to me when I see a kid uh, seven years old and they already have their own iPhone. You know, I had a flip-flop, uh, what is it, those old iPhones, are not, I mean, phones not until like not even seven years ago. And I saw this kid already with the latest iPhone. Bless. He was blessed. But I was like, it's just that we, we, we give so much. And I think uh, there's boundaries. We have to have boundaries. God gave us boundaries. Thank God, right? Um, so I know that you're going to hear from amazing people. But I want to give you one scripture. And that's in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 8. And this is something that my family have lived by. And it says, here or Israel... We always personalize the word for us, so it will be here or Roy's family. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And many times that's where we stop, right? I'm going to love my God with all my heart, with all my love, with all my strength, but we forget our children. Many times we give our children choices. God is not giving us a choice here. The second thing that God says, and these words, which words? His word, which I command you to do, which is to love God with all your heart, and we go again over those, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently, which means daily, over and over and over and over. And that word dil like, diligently means like almost like chewing it up. Have you seen those uh, um, documentaries where Mama Bird is eating and they puke it, and you know, kind of that, like that? <laughs> So we come to the church because it matters. This is where we get equipped. So whatever I chew, I need to go home, bring not only my children, but I need to talk constantly about the word of God. And he says, you should talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You should bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So in other words, he wants us that the word of God, that we're so fixated, we're so focused in how we're going to raise our family, that there's nothing that can distract us. And he says, and you should write them on your doorpost or your house and on your gates. And then, well, we don't do that, right? So tonight I'm giving you permission to get tattoos if you want. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want letters. Uh, but it's, it's how many times, and I'm going to ask you this, and then I'm going to give the mic to Jess, but how many times do we really talk to our children that the first thing that we get up and, and we teach them to praise God, mm. right? It says, when you lay down, it says, when you go shopping, when you take them to the park, right? Uh, it says, constantly pour into their lives whatever you know. I cannot give my children what I do not have. 
And so I believe that today you're going to learn from four, four amazing families. And, and, and it doesn't matter if you're, if you're here and you, and you listen and you're like, oh, my gosh, I, you know, I, I made a mistake or I wish I could redo my life. I'm going to tell you that with Jesus, you don't have to wish to redo your life. You can start a new chapter tonight. Amen. All we have to do is agree with his word. All we have to do is repent and change the mind that we view fa family and life. And we're in right, in right standing with God. So the first person that you're going to hear is from De La Rosa, Jessica De La Rosa. Just out of curiosity, how many of you still have children at home? All right, wow. there's a lot of you, there's a lot of you. And I'm so sorry, I'm getting off track, but I see Frank, is that Frank back there? Oh my there? gosh. Say congratulations. What are you doing here, Frank? Frank had a baby last night. And he's in and he's church. in the house of God, because it's family night. Woo -woo. We love you, Frank. You know why? Because it matters to him. Yes. 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 We applaud you. Yes. Okay. So, if, um, if you don't know who I am, my husband and I lead the prayer ministry here at the church, and we are super, super passionate about the presence of God. We're passionate about um, hearing the voice of God, and we've kind of made it our um, goal to share that with other people and to teach people, and it is just because we know the presence of God has transformed us, and so we feel like everybody needs to know what intimacy <laughs> with God is like. And in this journey of growing in God and um, teaching others, God has really uh, spoken to us and said, what you're teaching other people, you need to teach to your children. Your children need to be the ones first that are learning these exact things that adults are learning because there is no junior Holy Spirit. The yeah. same Holy Spirit that's inside of you yes. is inside of your kids. And so we have four kids, um, 15, 13. I, there's so many. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> there are the pictures. 15, 13, 9, and 7. Mm -hmm. And um, each of them love Jesus. And we have teenagers, so it's not the easiest thing. Um, <laughs> but here's some notes that I took down and I wanted to read to you guys. Um, king Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he lived um, right before God. And as a young adult, so 18 years into his reign as a young adult, he led the kingdom back to God. Wow. David was 30 years old when he became king. But it was at like 15 when he was anointed as wow. king. Jeremiah was only about 13 to 15 maybe when God spoke to him. Um, and Samuel was 11 years old when he heard the voice of God audibly. Jesus said, let the children come to me. God has this place in his heart for kids. And, you know, I, he says, um, because the kingdom of God belongs to, to these, to their faith, the faith of a child. And I think that we can learn so much from children. And we're, we sometimes we push them to the side and we want to receive. We want to hear from God. I went through a season when I was first like, um, experiencing the Holy Spirit in new ways and getting intimate with God. And I thought my kids were actually a distraction. I know that sounds like a terrible <laughs> mom. But you know when you're like, I just need Jesus. And then your kids are there and you're just like, oh, can I just get five minutes? Oh my, you know, and so, um, but God has taught me, you know, no, you need to be in the spirit and you need to teach your kids to come in with you. And so um, what I've noticed about all of these people is that I believe that there was someone in their life. They, they all went through preparation seasons and until they stepped into their destiny right and they needed people around them to help get them there and you are those people as parents if you're not a parent and you're sitting in this room there's it, maybe you you have grandchildren maybe you're an aunt or an uncle or maybe you're a young adult in this room like you need to be those people for our kids that you to teach them to help train them we're all one team one church and god will put kids in your life so that you can help them young adults teenagers yes. um there's a, a church that i know of that has prophetic conferences and they actually have um like prophetic teams where they speak over people and they put kids on their teams because kids they hear the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and they're not afraid like we are, you know, we are, we're like, is that God? Is that not God? I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> but kids, they go for it. So we have to learn to trust them. We have to learn to listen to, to what they're saying. And, and we, we can't push them aside. 
um, when it comes to things of the spirit, listen to your kids. Believe what your kids are saying. You know, sometimes kids will come to you and they'll say, I had this dream or I saw this or I heard this. And we can easily say, what are you talking about? You know, but no, we need to listen and, and ask them questions and we need to lead by example. Yes. So as we're wanting our kids to grow in the Lord and to hear from God, we also need to be hearing from God. We need to be in our word. We need to be learning to pray. So when our kids come to us with questions, we can encourage them to grow to the next level with God. Um, all of my kids have, have different giftings, the different things, different ways that God talks to them. Um, God talks to all of us different mm -hmm. ways, right? And um, something that the Lord has taught me is that it's our job as parents to discern um, those gifts in our kids so we can pull them out, you know. And, and um, the scripture that I have tonight, which everybody knows the scripture, but I'm going to read it anyways, is Proverbs 22, 6. But I wanted to read to you guys from the Amplified Classic, um, which says, train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gift or bend. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I think sometimes we hear this verse and we automatically think, train him up in the Lord, train him up to love God, and they're not going to run away from God. But what it's actually saying is, is it's not about us training them up to, to do what we want them to do. It's about us training them up to do what they're called to do, what they've been designed to do, what, what the gifts inside of them are to help them go along that direction. So as parents, as friends, as grandparents, aunts and uncles, we need to know um, what those gifts, we need to see it in them, and we need to help pull them out. Amen? Yes, that's awesome. Um, kids are sponges. They're going to do whatever you do, okay? Yes. So um, if you want them to read the word, you got to be in the word if you want them to pray. So um, in our home, um, because we're so passionate about hearing the voice of God, we really challenge our kids to listen to God's voice. So, you know, we, we actually are intentional and we practice. And so that's kind of weird. You know, how do you practice <laughs> listening to God? Well, we drive in the car and our little ones know, let's play the Holy Spirit game. And we'll do something as simple as instead of 20 questions, we'll say, um, Let's guess something. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. And the kids will ask. We've taught them at a very young age to pray in the Spirit. And I want to encourage you guys, teach your kids to pray in the Spirit. I know um, recently we prayed for a group to receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism of, of um, the Holy Spirit. And this girl says to me, I feel like I'm just repeating what you're telling me to say. <laughs> and I said, that's okay. Repeat it. Because what happens with kids is that you they they learn by repeating. So mm -hmm. they'll repeat after you. And then before you know it, all of a sudden, they'll be doing it on their own because they have this faith in them that is just so unbelievable. And so that's happened with, with our kids. My little one, I always talk about her, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's a baby. Um, she, when we first taught her how to pray in the spirit, she would just repeat after us. And then one day we went to the, I walked into the bathroom. She was taking a bath and she was just singing in another language. And I said, what are you singing? I'm singing in the spirit. <laughs> and it was different than what she had repeated after awesome. me. So, so it's okay for our kids to, to learn that way. They need to learn that way. Um, uh, what else? Do, do, do. All right. Um, Make it normal in your home to hear from, from God. Encourage them when they know something before anyone else knows it or if they're thinking the same thing. You know, we always say, oh, you're a little prophet. Or, mm -hmm. you know, daddy loves to, to listen to dreams. And so they'll wake up in the morning and, and hey, I had a dream. I want to tell you all about it. And sometimes you think they're totally making that up. It's not <laughs> even real. But they're just so excited <laughs> Yes. to share. Yes. And so I just want to encourage you guys, make your home a place where the kids, where kids feel safe and teenagers feel safe, especially teenagers, because they really start hearing God in new ways. And sometimes we don't know what to do with it. Find people and ask them and talk to them, but make sure that your kids feel safe, that they can come to you and you're not going to be like, that's weird. No, yes. because God is talking to our children and we want to be a place where they can talk. That's good. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Who next is Jessica B. She was 
You were born again in this house. God brought you here, and it's just so beautiful when you choose to believe God for the entirety of his word. Like, and I have to say that you are that person, and uh, I think that church needs to know you and know your story with your child. Thank you. Yes, so um, I'm a single mom. I'm not sure if you guys know my little daughter, Emily, but when I first mm -hmm. attended Elevate Church, um, I was broken. I was very hurt. And I was raising a child all by myself, so it, it, was, it was very hard. It was very difficult for me. But I had so much love and support from the church. I had amazing people like Frank who <laughs> would just come and talk to me and give me support and just let me know that they're here for me. I had amazing people like Miss Denise who just gave me so much love. Jessica De La Rosa mm -hmm. and Pastor Jessica. I had a team. I had a family. So... I felt really loved in this church, and it was hard. It was a hard process knowing that, to understand that I'm not alone, that I have God with me. I'm, I don't have a partner with me, but Jesus is my partner. Mm -hmm. And it was a struggle for me to understand that. It was. But the transformation that took place in my life and in my daughter's life is so amazing. For any single parents out there or grandparents that are raising up, you know, your grandchildren, you guys are not alone. God is there with you. Yes. You're, you have an amazing church family, and you have the Holy Spirit who's your comforter. You have Jesus right there who's going to do this with you. And one of the verses that I had was actually the same verse that you had. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I actually have it in um, the Passion Translation that reads, uh, dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. And, you know, when I got plugged in the church, it wasn't right away. It was a process. But I, I wanted that transformation for my daughter as well. Mm -hmm. She was hurt and she was broken. So what I did is I showed her, you know, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. We serve. This yeah. is what we do. We take care of God's house. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I had a lot of, you know, not a lot of negative comments from the family. Just, you're spending too much time. She's mm -hmm. not going to like it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think you should be doing that. But I'm not listening to what they're saying. I'm listening to what my Heavenly Father is saying, what he's teaching me. That this is the way to raise up my daughter. Mm -hmm. Not the world's way. Not my way, but his way. Mm -hmm. And as parents in general, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to raise our children God's way because we get, you know, frustrated. We get, you know, we, we, just, we just lose it sometimes. But we have to, you know, figure it out. And it's something that you just, you told me, you know, how would you feel if, if our Heavenly Father said this to you? He wouldn't correct you that way. He would correct you in a loving way. And that's what, and that's what I love about God is that he corrects us, and that with that, we correct our children. And I love serving with my daughter. Um, we're here pretty much most of the time, and she <laughs> loves it. She knows that this is what we do, mm -hmm. and she does it with a passion, you know, like when we had, um, when you guys had the merge groups, and she was there, you know, mm -hmm. helping, and it's, it's what I love. And you know, despite of what the family might say or just people in general when they say, oh, that's how she is right now, but wait till she grows yes. up. It's yeah. going to be a whole different story. No, I refuse that. Yes. I don't I don't accept it. I reject yeah. it. Why? Because I'm planting a seed in my daughter and I'm teaching her, this is what we do. This is what we're called to do. And if she makes bad choices, again, the word says that her heart is with God, yeah. that whatever she goes through, she will remember that she's not alone, that she has God with her. Yes. And I love that. I love I love that. And it's true, you know, what just what you were saying, how we have to, you know, tr train our children and educate them and believe what they're saying. It's true. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our spiritual gifts and so do our children. So we need to be there for them. We need to listen to them, even though sometimes I know I've, it happens with Emily when she tells me things. I'm like, oh, I think you're making it up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I listen to her. Or I pray with her. And she has a heart of a servant, and I love that. I love seeing that that is my baby. That yes. is my daughter, and I can't wait to see her. And I've told her, you are going to be a leader in this church, girl. I cannot wait. Right. You <laughs> prophesy over your children, yes. and you refuse to accept any lies that people tell you that the That's enemy true. plants them in them. You, you know, you're there. You are their shield. You're their protector, and you're there to guide them and say, no, 
yeah. not my child, because my child belongs to God. And, and we have to be strong, and we have each other. You yes. guys are not alone. I was not alone. I had all of you guys here with me, yes. supporting me, guiding me with the times where I felt like I was going to lose it with her. <laughs> you know, my closest friends, the ones that I do life with, my fellowship friends, I would give them a call and say, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. But that's what the church is about. It's about being there for one another. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, how long have you been in the church now? I have been um, committed, committed for years. And you know that has taken me three years and a half for Emily to finally hug yes. me? Yes. <laughs> so you never give up. You never no, give up. I was like, no. one day she will love me. And she actually, she did. you did say, one year from now, yeah, you I will said, hug me. And then she would be like, nope. <laughs> yes, I say, it's okay because I love you. Yes. You know, and, and I think sometimes for you, I, I can honestly say that, uh, you know, because sometimes when our kids don't want to come to church, they, they didn't grow up in church. So we make we give them choices and yeah, give them choices, but still give them choices within the boundaries that yeah. you're setting. OK, fine. You're coming with me. Uh, you might sit in service. But next Sunday, you're going to children's church because that's what Frank is here. Um, yes. He teaches the, the whole children's ministry. We have an amazing children's ministry, you know, because we're have fun games and things like that. It's because they're learning yes. to pray. They're learning to love God. So we honor you for bringing your kids and yeah. you two guys and are doing a good job. And a shout out job. to Frank because he actually encouraged me. Thank you, Frank. He encouraged Big me. Big Frank? Like, yes. <laughs> he did. He was a huge help. He was a huge help for me and Emily. He was like, you know, you should put her. And I'm like, no, because we were so attached to each other. Yes. I, I believe like we both had separation anxiety from each yeah, other. Yeah. We're like, no, you're my comfort and we're yeah, coming yes. here together. And, you know, and I remember Jess was like, you should go upstairs with her. I'm like, no. <laughs> so I was up there when she was um, in Little Lambs and, or City wow. Shakers. And I was there with her, and I was like, okay. And it was a struggle. It didn't happen right away. It took a lot of pressing in and a lot of breakthrough. But, you know, we did it. And my daughter has been transformed. Yes. Know, she's not that timid little girl anymore. She says hi to everyone. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and thanks, Frank, because we do have an amazing kids ministry that are there for you, Thank that you are God. doing this because they love our children, because they want our children to be planted in the word of God. And that's amazing. So shout out to Super Church and all the kids ministry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Next one is an amazing Mara and her family. I know we wish we would have sat their husbands too, but then like we're never gonna end. This will be like a vigil, right? Uh, so you guys are gonna hear from her and just I admire just the way that you guys are just so embracing. You know, our kids have talents and giftings, but your kids don't just show up one day and they're just wonderful. That means there's a lot of work behind it. Like like Jessica said, it's 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 repetition and, and and it's not what we say it's what we do so I think you guys are doing an amazing job with your children thank you so much so I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of embracing your kids gifts and talents and serving the church serving in the church at the same time so we moved here from Texas um, a little over a year ago and actually we found Elevate at um, the end of November and um, we are so thankful you all have blessed us so much um, so our kids are are in the industry and they work and we started out in texas doing commercial short films those kinds of things and um you know blair and i were like you know this is we've always been had them in church but this is a dark industry mm -hmm. um this is a scary industry to to introduce your kids to mm -hmm. um so we entered it as our mission field and we consider ourselves missionaries in this mm -hmm. mission field However, when we did that, we never dreamed that we would end up in the biggest, baddest, scariest mission field for this industry of all times in L.A. <laughs> but God opened door after door, and we stepped through faithfully. There were times we were holding our breath and closing our eyes as we were taking giant leaps, and one of those is, is coming here. But, but we did. <clears throat> and I believe that children will show you, begin to show you their gifts and talents at a very young age, um, I think some are probably more out front than others. Some, you, you know, they're, they're quiet in their spirit, but they're there and they show you. And I think, you know, as humans, we tend to sway towards the things that we're good at because they make us happy and we succeed. And who doesn't want to succeed in life? Um, I do have to brag on my husband. 
<laughs> the incredibly handsome redhead that greets you at the 10 o'clock service. <laughs> so he grew up in this, in this <laughs> he grew up in this family of sports and athletes, and he was a, an athlete himself. And so he's entering this world of the fine arts that he knows nothing about. It is foreign territory to him, mm -hmm. but because he loves us so much and he loves them so much and he sees it in them, he sees the joy that they have in their eyes. He sees the talent that they have. Um, and he sees, you know, for me as a mom, watching my daughter at 11 years old worship and mm -hmm. really, really worship, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And so, he has stepped in and embraced our strange little fine arts world. Um, so we thank you for that, babe. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, okay, Proverbs um, 4, 25 through 27 in the NIV says, Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all of your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot from evil. And Blair actually introduced me to this verse. Um, he was a kicker uh, for the New England Patriots. Yay! The Patriots so this was one of the verses that he followed when he was um, in the high stress. But I think it, as I was, I was, we were talking about it yesterday, I'm like, I just feel like that verse is the verse I need to share. So I also want to read it in the New Living Transit Translation. And it says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out the straight path for your feet. Stay on that path. So God tells us twice, like, mark the path and stay on it. Mm -hmm. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Okay, so if, I'm, if I want to walk a straight line and I want to just, I want to walk the straightest line I can walk, I'm going to fix my gaze on something straight ahead. So I'm going to walk and I'm going to walk a straight path. Well, if I look off to the right, I'm going to start, I'm going to get off my path. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk crooked and my, my path isn't going to be straight. So... Before we moved, um, before we lived in Texas, we we're both from Oklahoma, so I'm going to bring out a little bit of my Oklahoma twang for this next one. <laughs> <laughs> my mama used to say, mm -hmm. when Satan can't make you bad, he's going to make you busy. Mm -hmm. So I looked up some synonyms for busy, and they're occupied, absorbed, engrossed, distracted, diverted. So what would Satan like more than to divert you from your path? So if I'm walking towards my goal and I'm looking on it, and I have this voice over here that's saying, you're not good enough. If I choose to look at that voice, I'm going to sway off my path. Mm -hmm. And for us and for me especially, if I hear that voice that says, are you crazy? You moved from Texas where real estate's nothing to California? <laughs> what were you thinking? I'm going, to, I'm going to go over here. But what I have to remember That God tells me that if I seek him first, that all of these other things, these less important things are going to be given unto me. So when I walk this path and I'm looking straight ahead, I'm not going to listen to these voices because if I focus straight ahead and I focus on him, all of those things that I'm worried about how to pay the bills, um, what's, when, when's the next audition going to be, are we doing the right thing? I don't have to worry about those because they're all going to fall into place. But we can't do this by ourselves, and God doesn't call us to because we are definitely, we have strength in numbers. And as a family, we can't lose sight of our purpose here. And I, I, we feel like, you know, what better place to have our kids' gifts and talents nurtured and tendered than here, right yes. here. And so it's amazing to me that as we've, we're new here, as we've come in, that all three of our kids have been embraced with their gifts and talents, and they are being trained up by some an amazing, amazing teams of, of young adults and that are gone before them and have some have walked the darker path mm -hmm. and they're there to help them to stay on the good path. And I love that because I can't do it on my own and Blair can't do it on his own. So yes, it is very important to embrace your kids' gifts and talents, but it's even more important to serve in God's house because he is the only one that will keep us on our steadfast path and to our purpose, which is in his kingdom. We have to keep focus on that. So in show business, we say break a leg. But um, when <laughs> my kids go into auditions, we say change a heart because that's what we want to do. We don't want to break a leg, but we want to go in and make a difference. We want to change a heart. And just remember that in a dark industry or a dark place, anywhere you might be, what's the only thing that will show up in the dark? Light. So be that light. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And last... 
but not least, the mighty. They <laughs> okay, so if you guys do not know George, you need to get to know him. I, this guy serves with his family. I'm like, he works as a teacher. I'm like, who wants to take care of kids after that? You know, not me, because I did it for nine years. And I was like, I don't babysit, and I, I don't want to be in children's ministry. But he's such a the heart of gold, the heart after God's own heart, and we admire your family, and you're serving with your family, and it's just beautiful to see, and I think they need to hear from a father's perspective. Oh, there we go, <laughs> gentlemen. I cannot sit down. Oh, man, that was hard right now, dude. But um, <laughs> Praise God. A hey, packed house tonight. Super stoked you guys made it tonight. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to do a little rendition, a little song real quick, so <laughs> let's see how this goes. Okay, so ready? We are family. <laughs> I got all my sisters and tios and tias and grandmas and grandpas with me, right? It's Elevate Family Night, baby. Uh, my name is George Flores, and as you can see, I got a little bit of energy, but anyways. Um, I got the privilege tonight to talk about something that is lacking in many homes, and that's fatherhood. Ooh, that's scary right now. You're seeing all your faces. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so... I remember the day that I found out I was going to be a father, super excited, filled with joy, tears, crying, and then all of that had to go away because I had to start doing what? I had to start preparing, <laughs> right? Start preparing for my baby boy. I knew we are going to have a boy. He's my favorite. So anyways, <laughs> I do have favorites. Um, <laughs> don't judge me. Just pray for me, please. <laughs> so I have favorites, right? But anyways... Um, <laughs> So we had to prepare the home. We had to get a, a crib so the baby could sleep in. We had to get a car seat so, you know, that we can transport him appropriately. We had to get baby clothes. And no, he's not going to wear my clothes. <laughs> Yo. He's so funny. Really? Really? <laughs> Dang. I thought I got one. I missed one. One person didn't laugh at that. That was pretty funny. Though. But anyways, after the time of preparation, he came. And all that preparation ended up going out the door. Um, I remember the first month was, was pretty rough. Uh, in my head, I told myself that I was going to prepare to wake up in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., <laughs> be a, a 2 a.m. dad, right? And, and I was determined. Did it happen? No. But I was determined. You know, so, um, but, you know, uh, right now what I want you guys to do is I want you to talk to the person next to you. And talk about what, it is, what is it that God has called a father to be. Go ahead, do that. For, I'll give you like five seconds. To lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, stop. That's enough. To train. So uh, can anybody yell out at, at me, what has God called a father to be? Just one thing. Anybody? A leader? Uh, she said it. A warrior. Look at you, muy religious. A warrior. <laughs> warrior for God. Man, relax. <laughs> Let me see your husband real quick. Let me see the warrior he is. Um, stop laughing, guys. I'm preaching. Man. Okay. Um, so, yes, you said it. Provider. And that's what I want to focus on today. Um, when we think about provision or, or the man being the provider, we think about what? Dollar, dollar Money. bills, y'all, right? We think about cheddar. We think about uh, <laughs> dinero, right? <laughs> But also, money also goes by something else called bread. Everybody say it with me. Bread. bread. There you go. Money goes by the, the um, term bread. What does the Bible say about bread? So let's go ahead and go to my scripture. First scripture, please. <laughs> then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Let's stop there. Now, if God has called me as a man, as a father, to be the provider of my household. And he says, you know what, George? You're the breadwinner. I am responsible to do what? To bring the bread of, bread of life into my household. Mm. But how do I do that? Brings me to my next scripture. John 1.1. 1, 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Come on now. Are you guys making the connections? Yes. So me as a man, my responsibility is to bring the bread of life to my household. And the word of God says that the bread of life is God, which is Jesus. And that's my responsibility. So what do I need to do as a man? 
I'm responsible for bringing bread, the bread of life, to my household, which is what? Say it with me. The word of God. Yes. Okay. Come on now. How many men do we have in the house? You guys are here not by coincidence, not by mistake, not by chance, but there's a reason why you're here tonight. Because many of us are lacking in that area, which is the word. We want changes in our household. Ladies, I'm not going to. Anyways, there's a lot of females <laughs> up here, right? There's a lot of females up here. I'm cool with that. Where's my dogs at? Where's my boys at? We lack that. And God is calling men, and I believe the change is going to begin in Elevate Church, where we're going to begin to change the atmosphere in our homes, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in the state of California, whatever you want to call it, we're going to begin to change things. Why? Because the man, the position of man is rising up to his rightful place, which is head, the yes. provider. You guys ready for illustration? Yes. Okay. Real quick, talk to the person next to you. Tell them, what is your favorite fast food restaurant as a family to eat at? Ready? Go. All right, stop. Cut it out. Okay, so the Holy Spirit confirmed my choice on my illustration real quick. A uh, young man in the back scratching your eye. Stand up. You, sir. Yeah, you. That, that was the Holy Spirit right there. Look, what is he wearing? Uh, I bet you about 99.9% .9 of you said, in and out, in and out. And it's probably telling the person what you order, right? In here, I have in and out. What? That was all. You can sit down, bro. Sorry, man. <laughs> or never mind. Stand up for the rest of the preaching. I'm just playing, brother. In and out, baby. All right. Single George. Single George. I'm not single no more. She put a <laughs> ring on it, right? <laughs> single George is called to provide for who? Himself. Right? Mm -hmm. So here's single George, and oh, you know what? I go to in and out and you know, they're very religious, so they put like scriptures on here and stuff like that. <laughs> it's all right. And I provide the bread of life. I'm in my word, maybe five, ten minutes a day. That's me providing the bread of life to my household, the word of God, right? Boom. Then I meet this fine little young thing. <laughs> Four foot eleven Mashikan princess. Where's she at? She's somewhere here. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? Stop laughing, please. I'm preaching. Um, and I have to begin to provide more. It's not enough. What was enough for single George can't be enough now. Because how many of y'all are married? Ah, look at the laughs. You guys know what's up. First year of marriage is hectic, yo. It's crazy. Got things flying at you. I mean, it's part of my testimony. But anyways, God is good. He redeems, right? Yes, but again, what was cutting it for single George is not going to cut it no more. Then, you know, the birds and the bees, the apples and the trees, and here comes a baby. <laughs> I need more. I need more of that spiritual bread, the bread of life. Because guess what? Not only am I accountable for my wife being that I'm the leader of my household. Come on now. The yes. provider of my household. The head of my household. There's order. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Virginia. <laughs> it had to come from her. There's order. But I also need more now. Because I had a kid to, to take care of. Mm -hmm. I need to die to myself. I need more of him and less of me. Come on, especially when it comes to kids, dude. Yo, I like what some of you guys said. It was, it was amazing. Um, now, I'm saying this. Imagine, again, I'm the provider of my household. Eventually, there ends up more kids. Don't speak that over my life. I rebuke you. <laughs> so I'm not funny, guys. I'm just like... And then you need to begin to provide more and more. And more for your household. Why? Because you are the spiritual provider. Men in particular. Let's say you don't have a wife and you don't have kids. But guess what? If you're a man of influence, God is going to begin to trust you with other people. Young men. Yeah. Not young women. Let's yeah. get it straight. Young yes. men. Relax. <laughs> young men. Okay? There are a lot of fatherless homes that need male influences. And God has put you in this place for a reason and a purpose so that you can be a male influence in another, another young man's life. Come on now. How many young people do we have that are in need? And no, this is not filled with uh, cheeseburgers or anything like that. Double-double animal style, extra spread, chopped chilies. What? Okay. 
But let's say, I'm sorry, how much time do I got anyways? I don't care about the time no more. <laughs> let's say I was someone that, you know what, only Wednesday and Sunday was cutting it. Mm-hmm. Here's Wednesday. Here's Sunday. Is that enough to provide for my family throughout the week? Nope. Isn't that scary? Mm-hmm. So men, in particular, eyes up here, please. I need you guys to begin to begin, become men of the word on a daily basis. We want changes in our homes, right? But we don't want to do what it, what it requires for there to be change in our home. What, what is the requirement for there to be change in the home? Getting more of the word. Getting more of the word. Why? Because the more you, time you spend in the word, the more you, time you spend with Jesus, the more you're going to become like Jesus. Yes. And that's what, you know, I can't go preaching to my little four or five-year-old kid and start reading from the word of God, but I can be an example. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what, son? I've spent time with Jesus, and he'll see it in me. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Mm-hmm. So uh, Monday or Wednesday and Sunday, is it cutting it? No. You guys need to do it on your own. Why is in and out so popular? Think. Why? They're different. Why are they different? It's fresh. Their ingredients are what? Fresh. Okay, check it. They get um, their ingredients delivered on a daily basis. Okay? So if I were to go and order a cheeseburger today, but the bread from yesterday was on it, guess what's going to happen with that bread? It's going to be spoiled. See, a lot of us, we're still going based off of the word that we heard years ago. And God is like, well, wait a minute. I'm a God that speaks constantly. I'm a God that wants to, you, for you to hear me constantly. But you're still living off of a word from two years ago? Mm-hmm. What about the word that I said, what am I saying now? Yeah. Come on now. Men, God is speaking. What is he saying now? Let's start listening. Let's start spending time in the word. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would have been there like, drop the mic, right? Uh, um, you know what? It's funny. No, it's not funny. Uh, you are so funny, though. You serve in youth ministry. Uh, I think you still serve in children's ministry, or they would put you already, because he can't stop himself uh, from loving God. And that's what it's rare to see. It's rare to see, uh, and it's beautiful to see, because we are... I, as, as women, um, as I was doing my study today, I said, I'm not going to prepare preaching because I can go forever and they would, would never talk. But as I was reading the scripture that I read, and when it says that instruct your kids in the morning and the night, do you know that that was the job not of the mother but of the father? Like if you study Hebrews, it was the fathers. The fathers were supposed to do that. Mothers were just reinforcers. And I think because we... Everything in the kingdom, it's inverted. I always say that it's inverted. So you preached right on it. I said, you know, I'm, that's for another day if I'm going to explain it. But you just said it. You know, you, you, you said it and you guys all did an amazing job. And, and I don't know where you are in your family today. Maybe you're here and, 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 and then you're like families all over the place. And maybe you're already in your 20s and, and the seed was planted in your life when you were a child. But then you, you derail. But I'm going to tell you that the seed that God plants, that never fails. His word never fails. We fail, but he never fails. So at any time in your life, you can return to him. And I believe that there's many of you here that you grew up, you, you have the word. Maybe you're in your 20s, 30s. Uh, and you're here tonight and you find a way from God. But God will remind you, I am the bread of life. I am the one who can sustain you. His grace is sufficient. And with God, it's never too late. Or maybe you're, you're here and you're a parent and then you're like, I missed my opportunity because now my kids are grown and, and they're lost and they don't want anything to do with God. No, if you re- choose to return to the word of God and you choose to abide and you choose to remain in what God says. And believe me, faith is not easy. It's not easy because you don't see it. The more you pray, the more rebellious they get. The more you pray, they don't want to talk to you. But the more you pray, transformation is taking place in your family. 
And I am so taking that word that you said that our men will arise. Because there's such a beauty to be in order, in the right order of God. That doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, is this church pushing away women? No, no, no. It's because we're taking our place as women. We're taking our position. You know, we're nurturers. We're catapulters. We, when you get married, you catapult your spouse to their destiny. And, and, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. People see our children, they're like, oh, they're so wonderful. You have no idea. Uh, seriously, what the product, you see the end product, right? We see their children, they hear from heaven. You, they hear Emily, they see your kids, and, and you're raising your kids. And then that didn't happen overnight. It was that someone just you went to a prophetic uh, conference, which I do. Hey, I am prophetic and I love it. But someone lay hands, and, and then voila, the kids were like completely transformed. No, no, no. That first one that needs to be transformed is us as parents. I believe that we need to come back to, to our first love, which is God, which is Jesus. To have the strong relationship and conviction in our home. Because at the end of the day, and I always said, and no one's perfect, but I am who I am behind closed doors. Because outside I can put a veneer and we look great, right? Like the Joneses, we look super good. But inside you're broken. But I'm going to tell you that God is not, he's not afraid of our brokenness. He's not afraid of our mess. He actually loves it. He loves chaos because he can come and put order. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.